Welcome to the PokerStrategy.com TV World Championship here in London, where 42 players from across the globe will be taking part in the hope to win a first place prize of $20,000. Over the course of seven heats, each player will be sat here at this very table. Lose all their chips and they're out the door. But win and they'll be going through to our final with the hope of winning that top prize. From as far afield as Spain, Russia and South Korea, these players will be looking to take away more than just memories from their trip. It's an opportunity to see the London mm -hmm. and uh, the second thing to play big games. It is really a strategy game. you got to play aggressive. Don't be passive and too tight and just collect the chips if you can. Loads of great players. Pretty fast structure. One player wins. It's all about the glory. The whole strategy. Uh, goes around this factor. Try to win it all and run good. That's the plan. When I only have to concentrate on one table, it shouldn't be a problem. And I think it's going to be a great experience. Let's meet the first set of players in line for that spot in the final. Sergei Gorkov of Russia starts us off in seat one. The 40 year old poker coach will have 46 year old professional cash game player Robert Plinsky to his left. 20 years his junior is Belarusian qualifier Evgeny Shulzenka, age 26, and Vladimir Zakharin, an accomplished beatboxer from Russia, takes his place in seat 4. Originally hailing from Sweden but now settled in Germany, Matthias Borg is in seat 5, while the table is rounded off by relative poker novice Vitaly Cohen, who's only been playing poker for 14 months. Let's join our commentators for the action. Here we go then with heat one of the Poker Strategy TV World Championship. I'm Trevor Harris alongside Neil Channing. That's Barry Mundy, our tournament director. And what so often happens, Neil, with these qualifiers in the early blind levels, there's not a lot of action, people are playing tight, except sometimes there's a loose cannon and that can make things interesting. Yeah, you, uh, you've got the players here starting with around about 50 big blinds. Now, um, on the second level, uh, once they get to the stage yeah. where they've got between 20 and 30 big blinds, it would be totally incorrect to ever do anything other than uh, three bet shove over an opener, really. Uh, if you're, uh, you're going to open with the intention of folding on that second level, that would be a mistake. So on this first level, you actually have got a little bit of play, not very much, but some potential to splash around a little bit. Look at this, Cohen's found bullets first hand. Yeah, he's splashing around, isn't he? Uh, straight in with the raise and... Uh, one not getting too much action so false. far. Blinds one and two thousand. Incidentally, they start with a hundred thousand. And he's yeah, he made it six, so it was just a sort of standard three big blind raise, and uh, he got it through. How annoyed are you when you pick up bullets, you raise it, you get no takers? Yeah, I mean. Uh, if he, uh, if he turns out to be a bit of a madman playing every hand, he'll be uh, wishing he had those ones later. People tend to give you the benefit of the doubt early on in these things. Well, at least he's taken the blinds, they always say. Better to win a small pot than lose a big one. Six, six folds. I noticed he raised to three big blinds, though. That would uh, maybe indicate to me that he's uh, not one folds. necessarily six the folds. most experienced player at the table and maybe a little bit nervous about getting those aces outdrawn. A lot of people would just say that 5,000 or 4,000 is a reasonable raise. You can't waste a chip when you've only got 50,000 to start with. 100,000, sorry. Well, here's uh, some interesting play. A raise up with 8-6 off suit. And call by the 7-4. Yeah, I hate this call by the 7-4, although he's hit the front on this flop. I don't mind raising with 8-6 off suit. Uh, you're trying to steal the blinds, you've got momentum in the hand, you've got position, uh, but calling out of position with 7-4, uh, basically to play fit or fold poker, only continue if you hit, uh, is, is really not the way forward. Well, Borg bets and got it through because he hit the flop. Zacharin couldn't play with just eight high. Obviously, we can't read his mind from here. I wonder what he'd have done if he hadn't have hit the four, though. 
I'm sure we'll find out as we go through this heat. Seven heats in all, just to remind you. Only one place in each heat available for the final, which has a first prize of $20,000. Top four get paid in that final. Seat one folds. Here's a playable hand, Jack Queen suited Seat for Plinsky. Yeah, he's gone for a more, um, what I would imagine to be a standard Seat open of 5,000. Uh, nothing wrong at all with that. Queen Jack suited Seat a five, perfectly five. nice hand to raise with. Three Obviously, you four. can raise with anything, though, at this stage. It's... Uh, it's hands that you can call and re-raise with that are a little bit more tricky. Ace-King looks okay to re-raise. And, uh, yeah, a, a solid enough re-raise there to 17. Um, I think a bit big, though, from Vitali, and uh, it makes me think possibly, again, you know, he raised, when he had the aces, he, he put the full three big blind raise in. The three-bet size here would normally be up to around about 16,000. Try and induce the guy to make a move with a worse hand than ace-king suited, uh, like ace-queen or ace-jack. Uh, when you make it such a chunky one like that, you're really only going to get action from a, a hand that you, you know, maybe a pair of tens or above, hands that you, you, uh, you're always going to get action from, however much you make it. Yeah, he's only been playing poker for 14 months. Coming from the uh, Ukraine, so well, he's maybe won, touch of inexperience, possibly. Well, he's won two pots so far. We can't be too critical. I mean, he's had uh, two nice hands, and he's uh, he's picked up some chips. But uh, yeah, it'll be uh, it's early stages. We're trying to feel these players out, and they're trying to feel each other out. Another pair of aces <laughs> out early on. Must be nice. Photocopier rather than a dealer here. It's uh, Zachary in who's picked up the aces. Yeah, and he's, um, it's, a, it's a dream scenario, isn't it? Someone's already raised up to 5,000. You find the aces, and he's gone for a deceptive just call. So here's a totally different strategy to the one we saw Cohen playing a moment ago. I think it's too early for this, to be honest with you. Um, as it happens, he, he may entice a player in behind which is obviously what he was hoping for. But in the early stages, I find people play fairly straightforward and fairly tight. Uh, they don't do a lot of three-betting with no hand. And uh, if you're calling here, you're only really hoping that you set up a squeeze play, that someone will come in behind with a three-bet, perhaps with a light holding. This is not a light holding. A pair of eights is a perfectly reasonable hand to do this with in this situation. And uh, I, I think he's pretty lucky there. Uh, to find somebody with such a good hand as a pair of eights behind. Well, it's Christmas here for Zacharin. Gorkov's raised yeah. it up with the eights. Zacharin with the aces. Going to have to look as though he's got a tough decision here. Bit of acting. Now, Zacharin should make a raise. When you raise, it would make it 34,000 total. He's asked what the minimum raise is, which is perhaps a little bit suspicious as well. Uh, people that seem to be quite sort of pedantic about the amount and take a bit of time like that, often if someone says, how much is it to me, and then they go in with a raise, uh, it's a massive tell that they've got a big hand. And I, I, I might be thinking that this is a bit suspicious. I've got a pair of eights here. It's a horrible spot, really. Um, Gorkov's decided to call... Um, I don't really blame him. It's early in the tournament. He doesn't really know where he is. It seems a bit nitty to just fold a pair of eights here. But actually, my heart would be sinking with these eights. When I, uh, when I raise, and the guy who originally just called now suddenly asks what the minimum re-raise is and puts a re-raise in, I know in my heart it's telling me I need to hit an eight here. And when you start hoping and you stop knowing... That might be the time to start getting worried. Is there something at the back of his mind, though, trying to make him think that uh, his opponent's got ace-king? Is well, he trying to persuade himself of that? Obviously, ace-king is the hand he can beat. Um, you've got to think, is this the kind of way a guy would play a pair of sixes, a pair of fives, a pair of fours, the hands that you can beat? Hmm. Not really, is it? I mean, there's a, with three hands into the tournament, a guy's raised, he flat calls, now you re-raise, and now he comes over the top. Uh, you know your pair of eights is beaten. He knows here his pair of eights has been. Of course, it's a reasonable flop for a pair of eights in normal circumstances, but not in a pot where this kind of betting pattern took place pre-flop. I think realisation is slowly dawning here for Sergei Gorkov. I think he knew before the flop. I think he was set mining when he called, and uh, I don't think you can afford to set mine when you start with 100,000 chips playing 1,000, 2,000. I think his mistake was... It's, there's nothing wrong at all with his squeeze three bet 
uh, preflop. But once the, 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 the caller then wants to put in a min raise, although it's so cheap and it doesn't seem like much extra, I think you take the cut there. Or if you don't take the cut there, you call and you're only ever continuing if you hit an eight. But I, I don't know whether they have enough chips to do that. Well, he's 15 years his opponent's senior, but uh, experience sometimes <laughs> only get you so far in this kind of spot. He's got to junk the eight, surely. You can see he hates to do it, can't you? He well, doesn't think, want to let him go. I think what he does know is that there's almost no queens in his opponent's range. Yeah. Uh, you know, his opponent, if you have a queen... You, you never really, you know, what queen are you going to have? Are you going to play queen jack or queen ten in that way? Never, ever, ever. So uh, even ace queen, you, you're not really going to play it like that. Oh, you call a raise, someone else re-raises now, you min re-raise back. And he did show him the aces, so um, yeah. obviously Zacharin just trying to build his image early on. Well, he has the early chip lead too, 145,000. Cohen and Borg have more than they started with, and after that last pot, Gorkov is playing catch-up down to 58,000. There has never been a better time to enter poker heaven. We've cash games and tournaments 24 hours a day with amazing new promotions every month. All bundled with our award-winning customer service and unique personalised player zone. And it's not just online. Play for the chance to qualify to major European tournaments or even the opportunity to play on TV. Pokerheaven.com. More than just poker. Cards in the air again then. Still six remaining here. Two thousand to four. Only one can qualify. Blind still one and two thousand. Cohen's got queen nine, he's not gonna play that. What's Gorkov's strategy from here, Neil? He's been, not decimated, but he's got pretty much half what he started with. He's got to be careful now. He just can't waste any. He's got, he's got 25 or so big blinds, and uh, when the blinds go up, which they will soon, um, <coughs> he's going to have around about 12 big blinds. He's, uh, he's in all-in-or-fold territory, which, you know, is, you could say he hasn't really done a lot wrong. He lost a hand with a pair of eights. Um, but uh, it is a tournament where there is very little wiggle room. What do you make of Zacharin's call here with Queen 7? It was raised up. Yeah, I think it's horrible. I think it's arrogant to think that you can afford to... Uh, you know, he obviously thinks, well, I'm going to totally outplay the guy. Um, but I don't, you know, I don't see... You haven't got a hand and you're out of position. Um, you are allowed to fold. I think it's a big weakness of people and a big leak in their game uh, to call a lot out of the blinds uh, and be out of position with bad hands. So uh, I don't really like it. 2,000 to call. 7-4 suited this time for Shulzenka. Seat three folds. Here's a hand. It is a hand, but it's a hand where, uh, you know, you don't necessarily want to get it all in uh, for um, 50 or 60 Seat big blinds. Uh, if he was to raise and, and say, uh, Sergei Gorkov was to move all in on him, he's got to call. Yeah. Uh, but if somebody moves in for if if, if somebody raises and then he re-raises uh, and they call, uh, then Ace Queen's no good. I don't think Sergei's going to be moving in with the five three. It wouldn't be a terrible move actually. Um, he could turn around and say that uh, uh, Zacharin's been one of the more aggro players on the table and uh, he's got the perfect stack to shove on somebody now. Well, Kojak suited for Plinsky. Yeah, well, this, this, yeah, this is an error. Um, I mean, basically, it's a nice hand. In poker, you know, King, Queen, uh, King Jack suited is a nice hand. It looks nice. You feel quite happy when you pick it up. Hands have jobs to do. In this format... The job that you have to do with your hands is give yourself two ways of winning. You need to be aggressive and you need to either you win on showdown or you make the guy lay down. Trying to see flops, trying to um, build pots, trying to see how things develop through the streets. That's not the job today. So what you're saying is you'd like to raise, you don't like the call. 
Uh, I'd have probably just binned it, actually, because uh, you're going to be out of position on later streets against a strongish player who's open from early position, and uh, you, you've got no real need to get involved early on. If you do three bet and he calls you, you're out of position with King High, and you're basically needing to hit the flop or make some kind of really fancy move on the flop, like a check raise all in or something. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, as it happens, he's, he's totally all over this and he's probably going to win a, a decent pot. But uh, I, I personally would have just thrown it straight in the muck and not given it a second's thought. Well, Zacharin only has a, a gut shot and the overcard. He's making the call here. Surely not just to hit the 10 or the, oh, he's hit the ace well, on the end and that gonna, makes it worse. Of course, he's going to think that he's, uh, you know, he's got himself out of jail there. He may have been calling thinking, well, there's a whole bunch of cards that can come down where I'm going to represent, and uh, I've got position, I'm going to utilise that, and I'm going to take it off of him. Well, having made that call, that might cost him a lot of chips here, because he's almost certainly going to look up... Yeah, 27,000 in the pot. He's uh, Two bets, 11,000. He's bet 11, which I think is a reasonable bet. That's a, It's a real good size for a value bet. Um... I think uh, Vladimir Zakharin is going to look at that and think he really wants me to call here. Uh, there's no question he's going to raise. I think the, the question is uh, whether he calls or not. That's what he's thinking about. I think he's going to call anyway. He's, he's, he's pretty much hit his hand, hasn't he? Once, uh, once you make that call on the turn and you hit an ace, you've got to call. Well, he does make the call, so he sees himself losing any more, but uh, he hates it. And now he's regretting making that call off the flop. Decent pot, though, for Plinsky. And the blinds are up, as you can see. 2,000, 4,000 now. Yeah, well, now we really have uh, kicked these blinds up. You know, the guys who are down to fifty or 60,000, they've got 12 to 15 big blinds. If they open a pot, they can't open for three and then fold. Uh, three big blinds, 12,000, and then fold, leave themselves with 30 or 40,000. That would be really, really bad play. So they can only move in when they open. If someone else opens to kind of 9, 10, 11... Uh, they just about have fold equity if they shove. Is this the hand then for Gorkov? We know he's yeah. short, lines Gorkov, are up. Yeah, Gorkov has to shove here. He's, got, he's picked up a premium hand, one of the top hands you can have in poker, a pair of tens. Somebody's already raised, so there's a bit of extra money in there. He's picking up 13,000, uh, which is a massive addition to his stack at the moment. Gonna, he's going to add almost uh, you know 28% to his chips here. Uh, Any time you can add... 16% or more by shoving and there's a good chance the other guy's going to fold that's a good thing to do Well he's giving it plenty of thought but uh, I think we know that those chips are going in Yeah I wonder why he's thinking so much I mean he doesn't really want another player to come in behind him, a third opponent um, I would have thought you just you, no, well, he has done it anyway, maybe a little bit nervous about the TV and the, uh, not wanting to be the first one out but uh, no option there. That was just the uh, hand plays itself. Got to get that money in. And it's tricky for Borg now. This is why you shouldn't really be raising from early position with trashy aces uh, when you've got people that can shove on you so profitably. Well, despite the fact that Gorkov looked a bit nervous about shoving all his chips in, no need for a showdown. He did have the best hand, and you can see how he's improved his stack. He's got 101,000 now, and that's good enough for third place at the moment. Но это в первую очередь для меня имело бы значение именно сам титул э, чемпиона мира по ТВ ТВ Покер Стратеги чемпионатом. Это значило бы больше, чем 20 тысяч призовых. А вначале я буду играть очень тайтово, буду вступать в игру очень редко. А когда все привыкнут к тому, что я играю только на сильной руке, я буду играть на всем подряд. Я нашел много друзей, с которыми мы общаемся не только в интернете, но и в реальной жизни. Прежде всего для меня это именно комьюнити. Это те люди, вот, познакомился с которыми я благодаря Покер Стратеджи. So, Gorkov prefers the title to the money. I suspect, Neil, you're the other way around. Yeah, when do we get paid? <laughs> Later. 
Cards in the air. I was going to say something here, because we, we've got this uh, level here, 2,000, 4,000. I would advocate that if you're in the middle, i.e. You, you haven't really won a big pot and you haven't really lost a big pot, um, you're in a stage where you really must protect your position. If you've got around about 70,000, uh, the blinds are going to go up at, uh, at some stage to 3,000, 6,000, and when people open on that level to 16, 17,000, you need to have more than 60,000 in your stack to be able to get a shove through. And if you dwindle a few chips here on this 2,000, 4,000 level and don't leave yourself that number, you can't play proper poker in the next level. So uh, you have to be really careful about that in this level. And, and wasting chips with, you know, lazy calls out of position is really dangerous. Uh, what do you I, make of Gorkov's 4x raise with the pocket fives? It's too much. He doesn't need to raise uh, so much. Why does he do that? Why not, why not just raise to 9,000? People are generally in the early stages playing fairly cautiously fit or fold poker. People don't really call so much. You know, they tend to re-raise you or fold the aggressive ones. And you can tell the ones that are going to call. You know, I would look and think this um, uh, this uh, Vladimir Zakharin uh, seems to have... We know he's had a few hands, but he seems like he's playing a lot of pots. So when he re-raises me, uh, it's a different kettle of fish than uh, perhaps one of the other players who haven't we haven't even seen play a hand yet re-raises me. Yeah. So I, I might raise a little bit smaller here. The thing is that now Gorkov has raised so big... He's got money out there now, and uh, he's got to think. Well, there's 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 a bit of money to shoot at. Two thousand in it. Well, there is history, of course, between these two. Well, calling would be a terrible, terrible mistake by Gorkov here. Should he shove? He has to either shove or fold. And if he'd have raised a lot smaller, I would say it's an easy fold. Uh, and having raised quite big. There's a bit of money to shoot at here against an aggressive player. I might advocate the four bet shove here. Harry Mundy looking on, make sure that everything's in order. He has junked the fives, and Zachary gets that race through. Yeah, I think that was a bit poor, really, by Sergei. I think he's showing a bit of inexperience so far, and uh, uh, I think he's dribbled a few chips away. Just wondered whether you were suspicious there, because as you mentioned, Zachary has played a lot of pots, and he said to him jokingly when he mucked those fives, aces again, we know they weren't, the fives were good, but it would have been a race. And yeah, he shoved and got called. Pocket pairs in these early stages of these things are tricky hands to play. You really don't have enough to set mine. Is it two folds? Four thousand? Is it three folds? Shulzenka not going to get involved. Suited ace here for Zacharin. We know, just from having watched him for the last ten minutes, he's going to want to play these. Yeah, he's aware that his table image is a bit gone. Uh, but on the other hand... He's in the cutoff seat, late position, with an ace in a short-handed game, and he's got chips. So I would imagine, yeah, he's ma he's made it eight. He's showing a lot of signs here of being an experienced internet player here, uh, making it eight thousand to go. Uh, we noticed in the previous hand, uh, Gorkov made it sixteen thousand to go, way too much. Eight does the job. You don't need to waste chips. Let's uh, let's get the job done as cheaply as we can. A min raise is perfectly adequate. People will still fold hands like nine five uh, for eight, just the same as they would for sixteen. But the bet's eight thousand total. And Gorkov might think, well, it's a suited card. It's quite cheap. I'm getting odds as fourteen in there. It only cost me four, and that's a, that's a real danger because it's not the four it costs you. It's the playing the hand out of position, which is what you're going to have to do for the rest of this hand with a trash hand like king seven. What do you do when a seven comes down or an ace and a king comes down and you don't really know whether you're any good? Check. Well, neither Check. appears there. The ace is there for. Uh, Zacharin, of course, so he's going to bet and that'll be the end of it. Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure he was going to bet whatever came down there. Uh, I would have said he's going to see bet 90% of the time here. And uh, the fact that he's hit just makes it a, a little extra bonus for him. And Gorkov just bleeding off a few more chips. And Zacharin collecting a few more as well. Oh, nice collection there already. I wonder, though, if you're one of the other guys, if you take a guy like uh, uh, Matthias in seat five, who we haven't seen too much of, you're sitting there and you're watching this guy on your right. He seems to play every hand. He seems to be very involved. I'd be thinking, I'm going to get you later. <laughs> 
Gorkov. Were you the bully at school? No, I was the bullied. King Queen for Gorkov. That's why I have such a sylph-like figure. <laughs> I never had any dinner money. Because <laughs> everyone nicked 10, it. 000, exactly. All right. Ace here for Flensky. 10,000 to call. Gorkov's bumped it up. Oh, look at this. Going to be some fireworks. Shulzanka finds Cowboys. Yeah, he's just thinking about how much to make it. See, three raises to 25,000 total. And he's not moved many chips so far, so I think his opponents have got to respect that raise. Yeah. Yeah, Zachary, I don't know why he's wasting time, really. He's got a raggy ace. Might have been thinking of three betting a late position raiser, but there's way too much action here. And also action from a person we haven't seen play too many pots so far, if any. Gorkov in another problematic spot here. Well, this is another one of those hands that people fall for. If you are a slightly inexperienced player, and I, I suspect that Sir Guy is, uh, you can start to think, you know, King Queen, it's two picture cards, it, it adds up to 20 in blackjack, it looks like a nice hand. He's moved all in with it. Um, at least he's played it aggressively, I can't fault him for that, but uh, if he'd have called with it, I'd have been really um, cross. And he is slaughtered, as you can see. Yeah, he's not really in very good shape at all, is he? I'd, I'd imagine uh, we'll be seeing the end of Sir Guy here. He's, uh, he's had a trappy day, really, hasn't he? One or two tricky situations. The, the pair of eights early on started him off badly. So he's going to need a couple of queens or two, some running cards. Eight. And none of that Nine. is of any help to him whatsoever. Run is needed to stay alive, then, for Gorkov. Yeah, uh, queen, queen, is it, isn't it? I think that's the Just only about. Way. And uh, that's okay. not going to help. So we have our first casualty here. No card for Gorkov. Not been a great day for him. And he is the first man down in this first heat of the Poker Strategy TV World Championship. I thought I will have one chip on the chair to <laughs> win the tournament. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. At least he's uh, departing in a very sporting fashion. A handshake for all his opponents. And we are down to five. Oh, he's taken all his possessions with him, anyway. not <laughs> <laughs> Look, he had everything he, he owned in that bag. Let's check then on the current standings after that first elimination. Shulzenka leads the way more than twice what he started with. Cohen and Zakarin are OK. Plinsky has what he started with. Borg is the short stack. Join us again right after this break. New to poker and not sure where to start? Ever wished you could test your knowledge for money? Sign up to PokerFree50.com and answer our simple quiz correctly. And we'll give you $50 to play with. Free. PokerFree50.com Welcome back to the Poker Strategy TV World Championship from London. Five men still standing here. We're playing down to one. 4,000 to call. Lines remain unchanged at two and 4,000. Is that just immediate That's junk, ace-four suited under the gun? Um, well, you know, we are five-handed now, and there is money out there, but I, I, it comes back to what I said before, and I like the fold there from Plinsky, because uh, if you mess around and do ten or 12,000 here... You need to maintain enough of a stack that you've got a good three-bet shove Six stack. And you, everyone's more or less got that on this level. But once we get to the next level, there'll only be one or two that can afford to make a decent three-bet shove. And uh, I, I would like to make sure I didn't go into the next level with less than 60. That's why I'd throw away those kind of hands. A pair of sevens, a different kettle of fish. That's a very strong hand. Uh, and Zacharin is on the button, so he's entitled to raise. 
Of course, the thing is that people don't know that Zacharin's been getting reasonably decent hands. That's a terrible, terrible, terrible call there, by the way. Um, I absolutely hate that. Uh, and that was uh, Vitaly Cohen. Sorry, mate. You, um, you really have let yourself and your family down there. And you knew, as soon as you said it was a terrible call he was going to hit, which he has done. <laughs> but... Uh, well, you Very say fortunate. he's here. I mean, you know, would you want to put all your money in on this uh, on this flop? If you get action, you're, you're starting to think, oh, maybe he's got King Jack, Ace Jack, something like that. As it happens, he's, uh, it, 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 as you say, it's, it's almost a perfect flop because it's a big enough fo flop uh, for Zacharin as well. I mean, this is not a terrible flop for a pair of sevens. It's kind of drawy and... I think he looks like he's going to fold. It's funny because there was a long time in uh, internet poker where if someone made a weak lead, uh, they, uh, you, you know, they, they, the donk lead, you, uh, you raise somebody pre-flop and they lead into you on the flop. That would be a terrific sign of weakness generally. Uh, and often you could just be all over that and stick a raise in and you'd just take it down. But... Um, Mistakes are expensive in this one. Uh, you haven't got a lot of wiggle room, as we said, with uh, with the chip. So um, I think Zacharin thinking, well, I'm doing OK at the moment. I'll just uh, swallow that one. Again, I think Cohen showing a little bit of inexperience. We mentioned he'd been playing for just over a year, but he got fortunate on the flop and he took down a smallish pot. Yeah, but everyone's significant. And, I, you know, you have to be so careful in these things. Uh, often people come out in the interview afterwards and they say, well, there was nothing I could do. It was just a race, you know, ace jacket against two eights or something. It's the little pots here and there where you bleed five or 6,000 that really cost you in these things. And although he got lucky that time, it, it still doesn't mean he played it well. This is going to be interesting because Cohen's raised it up with the sixes and sitting behind him, the sevens. Yeah, and it's it's very reasonable to, to raise here, and uh, absolutely nothing wrong with that. I, I would be raising with a pair of sixes, um, and I think it's also reasonable to three bet. 25,000 more. The, the bet sizes are slightly bigger than I would advocate generally, but uh, not not much. 18 more. And Cohen's got to think, look, I haven't opened too often, and this guy's been reasonably tight, and now he wants to three-bet me. I can't afford to call, because that's committing too many of my chips without really finding six, out. Six calls. And, and that is a mistake. Um, really, his options were to move all in or fold, and uh, given that the guy hasn't really three-bet you too often, uh, I, I might advocate just folding there, which is why I like to raise smaller in the first place, so that it's not such a, a, a pain to let the hand go. And as far as Plinsky's concerned, now does he just have well, he to rep the ace? Well, he has to see bet and rep the ace. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, this is actually a decent flop for Plinsky because um, when he gets called pre-flop, he has to say how many times does Vitaly Cohen really have, a, have, an, have an ace in his hand? If he had ace queen or ace king he would have just shoved the whole lot in pre-flop. If he had ace nine or below, he would have folded pre-flop. So what hands are you really going to call with that contain an ace? Maybe ace jack suited? That's a very small range of hands. Mm. So, yes, you, this is this is absolutely brilliant play uh, by Robert Plinsky. I, I, I have to take my hat off for him. He's... You know, it takes guts to do this when you're playing on TV. You might be nervous, whatever. He's sticking the whole lot in with a pair of sevens on an A-side board. But I think he's thinking about it the way I've said. He's got to say to himself, there's no way Cohen can have an ace here. I'm going to represent it. Let's play positively. Let's take that money down. Hats off to you, Robert Plinsky. That's exactly what he's done. From Poland, he's 45 years of age, Plinsky. Playing for five years or so, and that experience is uh, showing so far. Yeah, I'm loving the way he's playing so far, and uh, I, I think uh, him and Vitaly Zakharin, uh, sorry, Vladimir uh, Zakharin, are, are really um, the two that have, have shown a bit of form so far. Well, Borg, uh, short stack, all in here with Queen Out of Hearts. Yeah, this is good play. I mean, uh, it's folded round to you on the button. You, uh, you're aware that you can pick up uh, a nice little pot here. The blinds are up to three and six thousand, so. Um, he he really couldn't wait much longer in if if he pays the two blinds and goes down to uh, twenty twenty five thousand or whatever he's pretty much dead so he had to do it very soon. You know the strategy 
of this kind of tournament is uh, pretty clear cut. You can't afford to get desperately short. I won my ticket uh, through a deposit free roll. Um, I think there was about, I don't remember exactly, but about 1,000 players, and uh, I made it to the top five, and that's why I'm here. It's the biggest live event that I've played so far, yes. The poker community uh, is quite important to me. I don't have so many friends because I started off as a passive, um, user, reading quite a lot. After about two years of playing, I decided to start my own blog. I started in Swedish because it's my mother language. I think that I have quite a lot of readers in the Swedish community. I don't know them in person though, but uh, yes, it's important to me. So when I start writing about what I do, why I do it, I have to think harder about what I do, why I do it. I believe that there will be quite a lot of people in the Swedish community following me when I'm here. Plinsky looking pretty relaxed, as well he might, with a reasonable chip stack in front of him. 6,000 cool. Yeah, the table's virtually leaning over, isn't it? All the chips are down this end, and the guys down the other end are looking a bit shaky. 6,000 to call. I think Cohen is going to want to get involved with 7 high, even with the button in front of him. Could you just spread your cards, sir? See, 6 volts, 3,000 more to call. And 3,000, 6,000 blinds. 15,000 total, 15, total blind on blind, with mm. an ace. Perfectly reasonable to raise with an ace in this spot. Um, no entries in this game, so you are betting. Odds on, 15,000 to try and win six. Uh, but, you know, that six is pretty valuable. Obviously, he's walked into a hand here. And uh, I think uh, Evgeny uh, should definitely re-raise. He's, he's just shoved it all in. Simple, but uh, effective, or it will be here. Yeah, I would have gone for a smaller inducing re-raise. I mean... The, what are the advantages of shoving all in here? OK, you get hands maybe like deuces, threes and fours to possibly fold. Uh, those are hands that you're going to be a small underdog to, and it's a good thing to get them to fold. Uh, but you don't, uh, you don't get hands of uh, sevens or above to fold very often because they're such strong hands, blind on blind. Uh, so that's not really going to work. And you get hands like ace-jack, ace-ten, ace-nine to fold. Those are hands you don't want to fold. So I would have gone for a smaller raise, try and get the other fella to now go all in over the top again if he's got a, maybe an ace-jack or something like that. And then you can really have him. See, six folds. Plinsky with no hand to play this time. Rag ace for Sholzenka, man from Belarus. Yep, should, should raise up to 13, 14,000. Raises to 12,000. Like that, Min raised 12,000, so he's um, he's showing a fair bit of confidence doing that. I think uh, it, it shows that you're not afraid to play flops if the guy does court you. You've got position, you've got momentum in the hand, and uh, Vladimir Zakharin is suspicious. Uh, he has an ace in his hand, which makes it less likely that his opponent has an ace. He knows his opponent... Um, Looks like he can play a little bit of poker. He's involved in a few hands, uh, and he's playing with position. So he's decided to three bet. He's not three betting because he thinks Ace Five is a brilliant poker hand. He's thinking he's got a good chance of taking it down here and now. There's a good chance his opponent doesn't have anything. He also thinks that against this kind of player, it's unlikely that he's just going to get called. It's either going to be. Uh, a four bet where he can just throw away his ace uh, ace five or a fold. Yeah, easily done. I think he showed him the ace as well, <laughs> which will actually make him feel even better. Pop for Zacharin then. He needed some chips. Cards in the air again. Six 
thousand. Remember, none of these players paid anything as far as a, a tournament entry fee to get into this. It's all on qualifying, and they can win twenty grand dollars if it all goes well. And that's a, a pretty hand for Zachary and the ladies. Yeah, Zachary and raising under the gun, and of course he's been very, very active. Um, now they're just going to go in here, aren't they? Neil? Well, they have to go in here, don't they? Uh, Vitali Cohen's got a massive hand, Ace King, the most active player on the table, has raised yet again. And you've got a stack where you can't really do anything other than re-raise all in um, or fold your hand when it comes to you. And uh, six raises to twenty-eight. Well, I, I like this raise actually because he's chosen to do an inducing raise. Uh, he, I, it's hard to see exactly how many chips he's got so I don't know whether there'll be much credibility in, in the fact here. he's trying to sell the idea to Zacharin that if you now re-raise I could fold yep. uh, because that, that's a way of getting Zacharin to re-raise with ace-queen or ace-jack or ace-ten hands that you are absolutely crushing four raises to 62,000 yeah and I think he did have enough chips to actually tell that story um, uh, Vitali, and uh, obviously he should be snap getting it all in here. The fact that he's thinking is is perhaps also um, giving away a little bit of his inexperience. Well, there's nowhere else to go, and however it was going to happen, all the chips were going to go in, whether it was a straightforward all-in call or whatever you can raise, I can raise more, but there's really no decision here for Well, I, I guess the only thing is that you're trying to obviously you, when you do get it in you want the other guy to call uh with a hand uh, worse than ace king an ace jack or an ace 10 or whatever so if you take your time and look reluctant uh just in case they can fold it but uh there's too much money in here already no one's folding from here if you go all in uh you're getting called and you've got ace king there's, folding ace king in this format would be a bad bad error Well, I can only assume this is a bit of Hollywood here because we know he's going to. Uh, well, he's folded them. Six he's folded the Ace King. Yeah, well, that's um, that's a you know we've seen a few mistakes today. That's the worst one by a long way. Uh, three bet folding with these kind of stacks not advisable. Amazing lay down then from Cohen. We're back with more in just a moment. There has never been a better time to enter Poker Heaven. We've cash games and tournaments 24 hours a day with amazing new promotions every month. All bundled with our award-winning customer service and unique personalised player zone. And it's not just online. Play for the chance to qualify to major European tournaments or even the opportunity to play on TV. Pokerheaven.com. More than just poker. Welcome back to London, where we are still five-handed. Somehow, been in fold or shove mode for a while. Blinds up to five and ten thousand now. Thank you. Yeah, most of the players, uh, well, all of the players really are in shove or fold. Um, the ones that have got big stacks are faced by this concept of the effective stack. Uh, they can't do small raises uh, because... Uh, when somebody uh, with a small stack goes all in, they're, they're pot committed against them anyway. And, and uh, here we see um, uh, a pair of tens, which is a massive hand for Vitaly Cohen. Um, he, he's got like ten big blinds, and I think he meant to go all in here, but he's done a min raise because he didn't say all in. Yeah, and you can't move your chips forward in two separate motions unless you've preceded it by saying raise. Yeah, and Plinsky, it's an awkward one for him because, in a, in a way, you're, you're there with a pair of fives thinking, well, I, you know, I could peel and see a flop, but uh, we're not in the business of peeling and seeing flops. Uh, he knows that whatever comes down, he's going to have to put the rest in against Cohen a lot of the time, and it, it, he can't afford to just give away 100 grand with a pair of fives, so um, he does the right thing and folds. If he just called the 20 thinking, well, that's cheap, maybe I can get to a flop, someone else behind could make a move. Now, this is an interesting uh, spot also for Zacharin here because uh, King-10 suited is an above-average hand, five-handed, but is it an above-average hand where a fellow's got all excited and tried to go all in and didn't go all in and he's only got 100,000 and it's a massive chunk of your chips if you get it wrong? I think he'll come to the conclusion... Uh, well, certainly uh, 
if uh, Vitali kind of had gone all in, I think Zakarin would say, well, this is an easy fold. Problem is, he's in the small blind, he's got five grand committed, and he might think, well, I could just peel, if I flop a flush draw or a king, I'll be happy to get it all in. If I flop a ten, I'll monitor and decide what the nature of the flop is and how I feel about it. And uh, I think that's that was the thought process going on in his head. As it happens, he's missed completely. Uh, so I guess he's just going to check fold here now. And he should have taken that intended all in by coming as uh, a big clue. It's gone <laughs> check, check. It's funny because Cohen's tried to now sort of go for the slow play. Ouch. And, uh, well, he's, he's really messed this up because he's only got 80,000 left and there's 50 in there. The extra money that he can win is significant because we are playing winner takes all and therefore you might say, well, he wants to gamble and make sure he gets a full double up. But on the other hand, survival in the tournament co accounts for quite a lot. Just adding that 50,000 to your stack, which he could have done if he'd have just simply gone all in there. He, you know, if he, if he does just check behind, if it comes an ace, a king, a queen, these are all bad cards for him. And uh, he doesn't know which one is bad. So, you know, for, for example, if this had come a queen now, uh, and Zacharin would now be up and down, and now bets... What does Cohen do now? He would end up folding the best hand. How often do we see this? He checked with the best of it. He's betting with the worst of it. He's actually got a one-outer here. Ten of spades, the only card that can help him. Yeah, he really has blundered quite badly in this one. Assuming that uh, Zachary's going to call, of course. Yeah, well, Zachary can't fold now. Once you Once you start putting 20 grand in... Uh, with a king ten, you, you're pretty much there. Once you hit a king, that's uh, you know. No miracle then on the end. Check call is the correct way to play by Zacharin because at least you're giving your opponent a chance to bluff at you. Uh, if you bet, the other guy will only call when he's got you beaten. Sit for checks. Well, it's gone check check. So Colin will save. A measly few chips, but I don't think he covered himself in glory in that hand. Yeah, he's got to be a bit upset when he sees... Because he was dominating with a pair of tens against the King-10. And uh, Cohen, I think, is going to have to somewhat reassess his strategy if he wants to stay alive much longer in his first heat. Are you surprised you got uh, to play in a big tournament like this? Yeah, I, I was surprised. I'm not supposed, you know, it, it was like a surprise for me. This is the first time when I will play before the cameras. There is serious prizes and I will play serious poker. It will be the biggest game which I will play in my poker career. Well, just be hoping at the moment, Cohen, that he gets a couple of half-decent cards. He's got to shove pretty much in the next two or three hands. Blinds are going to cripple him otherwise. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if, if they fold to him on the button, uh, he should move in with any two, pretty much. He's still got a little bit of fold equity, and it'll be just a result that they do all fold. A, a slight surprise there that uh, Vladimir Zakharin folded an ace. It may be a sign that he respects Shulzenka, uh, in the big blind because uh, he might think, well, there are easier chips on the table rather than picking on him out of position. Anyway, this is a massive result, like I said, for Vitaly Cohen. The first good thing is that no one raised in front of him. And secondly, he's picked up a, a, an enormous hand. A ace eight suited is well above average for his, uh, his requirements at the moment. And uh, it's getting folded round. 45 in total. So Shulzenka's having a look. I, I just wonder, Neil, whether he thinks the king might be good because he knows that Cohen's range is massive with the stack that he has. Yeah, absolutely. It's a math thing, isn't it? It's going to cost him 35 to call uh, and uh, there's 60 in there. So uh, effectively he's getting just a shade under 2 to 1. Um, if you think... Uh, if the other guy doesn't have a king in, your, in his hand, you're often kind of uh, 35 to 40 percent here uh you're not going to be dominating very often with a king four suited but a lot of times you'll have quite a lot of equity if, you, if you're up against a raggy ace 
uh, maybe a sort of an A6, A7, or an A8 like he has here, uh, you're only kind of uh, 62, 38, and you're getting some odds. So you might decide to call, but as it happens, he's, he's let it go and said, well, I might as well keep my chips. So Cohen's still alive. He's increased his stack by what to him is a significant amount. It definitely is. You can you can really uh, boost your stack up quite a lot by getting a couple of all-ins through. And Borg might go for one here uh, because he's he's picked up an ace and he's very short stacked. And if he doesn't go all-in on this hand, he's going to put a big chunk of his chips in on the next hand, uh, just putting them in on the big blind. Well, he's folded. Well, Cohen's found another hand, and this is, this should be another instant all-in from him. Don't take any time about it. Look strong. Do it quickly. Oh, he's done it, so I'm uh, glad to see the strong right arm comes out. And this is the best way to play from here. You're giving yourself two chances to win. A, they could all fold, and B, um, you might uh, win in a showdown. Making a small raise and then calling for the rest. Uh, some people advocate doing that because they think it looks stronger. It, you know, playing it this way, you've got to think, if someone's got like a pair of fours, a pair of threes, Getting that whole lot in, let's get the waivers out of there. We don't want the big blind to call with a pair of fours because he feels like he's got a little bit of money in there. We want to win it here and now with a king-queen. Well, Shulzenka has gone all in to isolate. Um, and Zakharin surely can't call with ace-nine. Yeah, both players have played this absolutely correctly. It's just one of those situations that happens. The structure dictates uh, there's going to be races. Uh, Shulzenka's a little unlucky because he's he's found a massive massive hand. He's, he was uh, he was all excited when he saw a pair of tens, and and actually he's just ended up flipping. Uh, he's a small favourite, but uh, he, he could have been in a lot better shape here. He could have been up against an ace four or something like that, where he would have been a decent favourite. Or well, pocket nines or something, I guess. When he's yeah, pocket pair. nines, pocket eight, something like that. So he, he's probably got about the worst situation he could have expected to get here. But uh, anyway, it's looking a lot better for him now. Nice flop. Oh well. <laughs> going to be hard for him to lose this one. All, all over. And um, we're going to have another casualty here. Cohen, who has been on the verge of elimination a couple of times, is going to have to go this time. The eight on the end is inconsequential. And we have another victim in our first heat. And to say goodbye to Vitaly Cohen from the Ukraine, which leaves us down to four. Fancy a game of poker but not sure where to start? Well worry no more as Poker Channel Europe have teamed up with the world's largest online poker education site PokerStrategy.com to give you the chance to learn and improve your game absolutely free. All you have to do is head over to PokerFree50.com today to gain free access to over 300 poker articles and 800 poker videos and sign up to become part of one of the world's largest online poker forums. Now, now, once you've signed up, you'll be invited to take part in a poker quiz. Now, don't worry, you don't need any prior knowledge of the game. If you pass, we'll give you $50 to play in some of the world's largest online poker rooms, absolutely free. Carrying on that education theme, there are free coaching sessions across a variety of poker rooms every day. And if that wasn't enough, we'll also give you free poker tools to analyse and improve your game. And being part of the PokerFree50.com community means that you'll be able to make friends, send and receive advice, and talk to other passionate poker enthusiasts around the world 365 days a year. So, what are you waiting for? Head over to PokerFree50.com today and sign up for an account. Claim your $50 free bankroll and become part of the most active poker community in town. Hello and welcome back to the PokerStrategy.com TV World Championships. We are four-handed. I'm going to come over to Matthias because it's a little bit of a dismal short stack you have here. Uh, I'm quite short stacked and uh, I think I'm going to have to get lucky with the cards in the next few hands or I will be the next one to leave this table, I guess. <laughs> are you comfortable playing with a short stack? Yes, I am. I've played quite a lot of short stacked, so uh, should be okay. All right, well, good luck. Let's uh, hope to see you double up. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> 
Let's now take a look at our leaderboard. Yes, thank you, Laura, which confirms uh, that Borg needs some help. He's down to 43,000. Cohen and Gorkov have both gone, of course. Shulzenko is the chip leader, but Zakharin isn't far behind. Fritzky with a few more than he started with. How does the strategy change now, Neil? We're, we're four-handed. Well, uh, definitely, obviously, as the number of players on the table goes down, then uh, worse hands are going to win the pot because, uh, on average, there won't be very many, you know, hold them, it's hard to get big hands. So it comes down a lot more to who's got the, uh, the uh, kahunas to put the chips in the pot. Um, I think Borg let himself get a little bit too low in this one. There, were, there was a hand earlier, he would have been eliminated if he played it, but I felt he should have shoved all in. Um, he's had one or two chances to stick it in. He needs an ace or a diamond here. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty decent flop for him, isn't it? He's, uh, he's ace or a diamond. He's, uh, the, his opponent's hit a pair, and he's still 45% to win the hand. So uh, we'll see what happens. Doesn't really affect anything. Diamond or an ace still required for Borg to stay alive here. River to come. Not there. And I'm afraid that's the end for Matthias Borg, the German. He can uh, put this experience into his Swedish poker blog that he writes regularly, apparently. And the field has halved. We're down to three. No fault of his going in with those uh, cards. He was so short. And it's a tough one to call from here. I take a part in uh, depositors free roll and uh, take first place, so I now in London. Как хобби плеер, то есть я не профессиональный игрок, я ну как хобби я еще работаю там на это. Покер стратегия дает мне очень многое, чтобы развиваться далее. Но это будет большое событие, большое событие в моей жизни. Я, конечно, обрадуюсь, потому что покер, ну, покер стратегии дает такую возможность вообще любому человеку, в принципе, добиться таких успехов, как победить в телевизионном турнире. Это прям фантастика. To be fair, Neil, it just doesn't get any better, does it, than super fantastic? Super fantastic. It is super fantastic. I think the, the three players that are left are actually the super fantastic three of the bunch. Um, it looks as though Vladimir Zakharin has been the most active. We know he's had the hands, though. He's, uh, he's had a lot of big hands, actually. He's got another big hand here, ace-queen. The other players are probably thinking... He's he's a nutcase. This guy is in every pot. He raises all the time, um, and it'll be interesting to see how they react to that. If if a guy like that raised on the button and I'm in the blinds, I might be inclined to three bet with, without even looking. Right, he's gone for a three times the big blind here uh, raise, which uh, I think that's what he's done, which is uh, you know stronger. Plinsky with King-7, I think he's going to get involved here, but they will be eyeing Zakharin with increasing suspicion. He keeps uh, making these big raises, and of course, yet again, he hasn't had to show it. Yeah, I might be inclined to maybe show that one and uh, give him the idea that, you know, I sometimes have a hand. Obviously, they know he sometimes has a hand, but people sometimes like to reinforce and just, you know, try and con their opponent a little bit in that way. Oh, another big hand, ace jack here. First to act with the button, three-handed. He's probably wishing he had ace queen this time and ace jack the last time, but ace jack's a massive hand, three-handed. Uh, the problem is, if someone does put a large three bit in, you're not absolutely in love with it. The thing before was that we were in a situation where it was all in or fold every single time. It's a lot more tricky now. Well, actually, it's not tricky for Plinsky because his, he is in, still in that all-in mode. Uh, it would have been more interesting if Shulzenka uh, had put the, the three-bet in because there'd have been a lot more money behind and there's a lot more thinking to go on. This one's fairly standard. 
If you raise in a three-handed game with ace-jack and you have a wild and crazy table image and a guy three bets you and you've put a lot of money in already, you just have to call. And when he does make this call, Plinsky will at least be relieved to see he has live cards. So he's not a massive underdog here. Barry Mundy just making sure the amount is correct and obviously Zacharin will make the call. Yeah, and if you're watching at home and thinking, well, what's going on here? A man suddenly risking his whole tournament with King 8. This is I'm not criticising Plinsky here. This is a great play by him. He's up against a super aggressive opponent uh, who's constantly raising. And uh, the, the main aim of this play, from his point of view, is, is to make Zacharin lay his hand down. And, and as you can see, Zacharin hasn't laid his hand down. Plinsky's cards are still live. So, uh, and, and he's ahead. He's ahead now, and uh, he's, he's going to get a valuable double up, 206,000 in the pot. Um, it's going to put him in, uh, well, he's going to have a third of the chips in play. But not now. Ah, that was the downside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did have a, a gut shot for a straight, but in the end, he hits his ace, and uh, Plinsky suffers an agonising death on the river, which leaves us down to heads-up play. It's going to be Shulzenka versus Zakharin when we come back. Welcome back to London, where the handshake tells you that either Evgeny Shulzenka or Vladimir Zakharin will be taking their place in the final of the Poker Strategy TV World Championship. But which one? Zakharin has the chip lead, Neil, but it's not a decisive one at the moment by any means. No, and uh, I think it's funny. I've played a few of these TV things in the past. Whenever they finish, all the players want to rush off and find out what hands the other people were playing and, uh, you know, hear from their mates who are watching it. What, what did he do? Did he bluff me there? Anybody that's on the table is going to think to themselves, this Vladimir Zakharin, he must have been bluffing like crazy today. It seems like he's played every single hand. We know he's had ace-queen a couple of times. He's had ace-jack, ace-king, two queens, two aces. And uh, the other fella, Evgeny uh, Shulzenka... He's been pretty quiet, really. Won a couple of big pots, hasn't been so busy. So um, I wonder what they think of each other at the moment. That's the key thing, going into this heads up. Well, it's been raised up by Shulzenka, called by Zakharin. And the flops come ace high. So if uh, Shulzenka can find a bet, he should take this down. Yeah, well, he's the pre-flop raiser. He's the, he's the man in position, so he's the man who should see bet here. But Zachary will know that. I think he'll have realised that this Shulzenka's a decent player. Um, I, I think these two... Um, I think the last three were definitely the best three players in the heat. And uh, I think they've got a bit of respect going on here for each other. Будет своего рода увеличение банкрола, ну и просто э, новая ступенька в моем развитии как игрока, так как это будет первый э, крупный турнир э, офлайн, который я выиграю. Э, сегодня, так как этот турнир довольно э, скоротечным будет, он довольно быстрый, соответственно, я буду находить хорошие моменты для э, моих э, действий all-in. И думаю, что сегодня будет много зависеть от удачи. Well, he certainly seems confident, doesn't he, Shulzenka? Yeah, I think uh, neither of them are lacking in confidence. Mines are up uh, 7.15 now, and uh, an ace on the button. I, th I think uh, Zachary will have come into this heads up thinking he's going to raise every button. Uh, so now actually having a hand, 
maybe he's just stopping to think, well, what, what do I do if the guy three bets me now? Am I happy to get it in with this ace five? Uh, with 600,000 chips in play, uh, which is um, 40 big blinds basically between them, uh, you're basically happy to stick the whole lot in here. So you raise an amount that induces the other guy uh, to re-raise, and then uh, you uh, you happily get it all in, basically. And that cards was for Shulzenka to play against him with. Yeah, that was the plan. Obviously, the other guy folding is what happens a lot of the time. And he won't mind that. All these blinds are useful. And the chip stack is building. I think both players have adopted the idea that uh, they're just going to raise every button. Obviously, heads up play... Uh, the small blind is in the button and they have position throughout the hand so that's an advantage so you should try and play more hands from that spot and less hands from the big blind uh, Zacharin's found a good hand here though and I think he should oh has he folded that's surprising he he thinks he obviously feels like he's got a bit too many chips to shovel in there that you don't get called by a worse hand uh, you can't call and play a hand out of position that would be poor so uh, just chooses to fold the king 10 and we are where we started 370 plays 230 yeah I thought he might have just shoved all in that last one really and just picked it up I mean king 10 is well above average heads up he probably thought, I don't want to make my last stand with this one. Uh, a pair of fours, of course, is also well above average. You get a, a pair and hold them about 6% um, of the time. Uh, so heads up, a pair is a very strong hand, although it's only a lowly old pair of fours. I think he's going to go for a raise, and if he gets shoved on, I think he's going to call and think to himself it's, it's a flip. But... Uh, well, it, it led to a fold. If I do get shoved on with a pair of fours, I'm happy to call because the other guy could have a hand like ace deuce, ace three, pair of deuces, pair of threes. There are things I'm dominating, and most of the time I'm just going to be in a uh, what we call a coin flip, but a pair of fours is often a favourite against two overcards. Three high this time for Shulzenka. But he has got the button, and uh, he did think about it, but no, he's folded. And Zacharin had a hand, King-10, and has the chip lead. Shulzenka's getting to the stage now where um, he can't really just do these min opens. He's going to have to just shove the whole lot in when he opens because any raise that he makes is going to pot commit himself. Queen-8 this time for Zacharin. Yeah, he's not so happy if he raises this one and gets shoved on. It's not like he's fist pump snap calling, as the kids would say. But uh, I think he's going to raise anyway because that's been working for him and he's got the button. Yeah, Shulzenka has been folding a lot of hands. We can see that he's good. And, but uh, he has just made the call here. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm happy with this either, actually. I think Shulzenka's maybe lost a bit of his aggression in the heads up. And... Uh, Zacharin's put the pressure on. He's had hands again, and he's hit this flop. Wait, check, check. Shulzinka would be entitled to think he's possibly in front with the king high here. I think... Once he's checked the turn, though, he is giving up, basically. If he if he's going to play the hand aggressively from here, he's going to bet the turn. Uh, and I think if you do check the turn, you're, you're doing it to check, raise, all in, or fold. And I think he's going to fold. Yeah, but it's 15. Well, he's only got king high. He's playing jacks on board, queen and his king. Oh. Well, he's chosen to call. Uh, he sort of figured that on this flop, it's unlikely that anyone has anything, and the four doesn't look like it's changed much. And if King High was winning preflop, it's probably still winning. So he's playing his hand as a bluff catcher, and if you do that, you have to check the river, let the guy bluff again, and then call. He's taken a very odd line here if he suddenly leads. Not quite sure what he's repping. Probably, possibly trying to rep a queen here. 
Saka in though is the man who does have the queen in his hand. We can see that hand is good. He didn't quite know what was going on, so he just made the call yeah, and he's going right. to take it down. You're right. It did look like he was a bit puzzled and thinking, well, I don't really know what's going on. Uh, he did hit the card on the river, didn't he, to give him a, a, a counterfeited two pair. But, um, yeah, it was a bit of a strange one all around there. So let's see the standings as they stack the chips, and you can see that Zacharin has increased that lead. It's about a three to one chip lead now, 457 against Shulzenka's 143,000. He needs to make a move and quickly. Yeah, he dribbled away a few chips there, Shulzenka, and now he's in the 10 big blind territory. He basically <laughs> has one move, which is to shove. Must be nice to pick up these hands all day, Neil. Yeah, it? he has picked up a lot of hands. Um, well, obviously, Vladimir's going to raise here with the two queens. He's going to make a tiny, tiny raise, as small as he can, just up to 30,000, I would guess. Yeah, because he wants, he, he so much wants Shulzenka to shove on him, and so he has to offer him as much fold equity as possible. Uh, give, try and sell Shulzenka the idea that if you move all in, you can make me lay this hand down, uh, which is hard to do when your opponent's only got ten big blinds. He showed his opponents the queens there as well and uh, provoked a wry smile from Shulzenka, who's not picking up anything at the moment. Yeah, he's probably feeling a bit frustrated, isn't he, when you're, you're just literally finding nothing every hand. But uh, he, he really... Um, he really just has to find a chance to shovel in with this small stuff. Well, he's got he's got a king queen now, so it's going in, and uh, an ace is going to call him heads up because that's a strong hand, and he's got the chips to fall back on. So here we are. This potentially could be the end of it. Shulzenka needs to improve, but he's not that much of an underdog as those percentages will tell you. But he needs to see some paint on the board. Otherwise. This will be all over. Barry Mundy supervising what could be the final hand in this first heat. Four's largely irrelevant. The ace is winning anyway. King or queen then required. Otherwise, Shulzenka's brave bid is over. That doesn't change anything. River to come. He's on his way already. He doesn't believe, does he? We're going to see some paint on the end here. And we're not going to. And after a, a real battle, it is Vladimir Zakharin who takes down this first heat. Decent effort from Shulzenka, but he didn't pick up any cards in the heads-up battle at all. So it's Vladimir Zakharin who takes down the first seat in our grand final. He did pick up some cards, he played them very aggressively. He's got a shot at 20 grand. He also gets to talk to our Laura. So Vladimir, you've ended up with all of the chips and made it through to the final. How are you feeling? Yes, Laura, I'm very happy to win this tournament. It's, ver it's very good for me. Uh, the game is, was not hard for me and uh, deal is... Yeah, give me good cards. Thank you for dealers. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is indeed all we have time for here. But do join us for another heat soon here at the PokerStrategy.com TV World Championship. New to poker and not sure where to start? Ever wished you could test your knowledge for money? Sign up to PokerFree50.com and answer our simple quiz correctly. And we'll give you $50 to play with. Free. PokerFree50.com